folk and art dolls are a reflection of national culture. Ukrainian folk dolls are the topic of my dissertation work. This is the only such dissertation in Ukraine. A toy designer who studies traditions and works to pass them on. The tradition develops when it gets updated. From the reconstruction of Ukrainian dolls to the creation of toy bears, which went on to become a separate branch of art, UATV has found a unique craftsman and scientist who connects the past with the future with the help of a needle and thread. Nagoro used to be an ordinary village in the mountains of the Japanese island of Shikoku, but in recent years it has seen a non-stop flow of tourists. It's all because the elderly craftswoman Ayano Tsukimi turned this place into a valley of dolls. They walk the streets, study and learn in school, fish and behave like most ordinary villagers. Most of these dolls, with the exception of children, have real prototypes, people who have already died. The fact is that Nagoro has been experiencing a demographic crisis young people have moved to the big cities and only the older generation remains. The population fell to a few dozen people. No one has been studying in school since 2012. Ayano Tsukimi, who came here to look after her dad, decided to revive the village and began to see life-size dolls. It was better than looking at abandoned houses and empty bus stops every day. Doll Valley has made Nagoro famous all over Japan and far beyond its borders, and the craftswoman is busy around her creations keeping them in perfect condition. Tsukimi Ayano proved that dolls are an important part of the culture and a career of the memory of her ancestors. Anyway, the way that what seems like toys have been made, what role they played in a person's life and in a family, can say a lot about a nation. There is also a doll maker in Ukraine who has traveled around many villages around the country to map the national doll tradition in an attempt to preserve it. I am an art historian who explores folk dolls, finds ethnographic samples of dolls, reconstructs them and also forms a collection of ethnographic dolls, using the dolls of modern craftsmen that are still present around of all Ukraine. Oksana Sklarenko is both a scientist and an artist. All the dolls in her collection are not artifacts, but handmade reconstructions in accordance with the descriptions given by residents of Ukrainian villages. While studying this craft, Oksana found another hobby within the framework of the European doll tradition. There is one more favorite theme I have – teddy bears. There is such a profession as teddy maker. I make bears from the very beginning, to the process of piecing it together, decorating the toy, dressing it up. Watch next. Why is it so difficult to determine what children played with decades ago? How else were dolls used in the Ukrainian tradition? And what makes a modern teddy bear a work of art? Oksana Sklarenko shares the knowledge she has gathered over the course of more than a decade and a half, only here on UA TV. Today, dolls are regarded as the oldest toys, but in different cultures they have never been perceived only as toys. They were used in ancient magical rituals by unrelated people around the world. Therefore, some of these toys were not intended for children. At the same time, they created dolls from different materials – wood, clay and even dried apples, like the North American Indians. It was they who passed down this tradition to Ukraine, along with agricultural crops, which Oksana Sklarenka found in her homeland, a village in Kirovograd region. When I was a little girl, my grandmother showed me how to make a doll from a corn head. It was autumn. My grandmother took a corn cob, wrapped it in a piece of cloth and drew a face with a pencil. I don't know where this doll is, but this is how traditions are passed down in a family. Oksana tried to sew soft toys and clothes for them as a child and only recalled this when she began to work as a teacher. So she decided to research this topic. Oksana's interest helped her in a scientific career in a little studied area. The theme of my dissertation work is Ukrainian folk dolls from the 20th to 21st century. This is the first dissertation in Ukraine dedicated to Ukrainian folk dolls. It is difficult to research because girls play with a doll and then it disappears somewhere. Folk dolls have a very short age. Dolls on a head, dolls made from flowers, dolls made of straw, grass, patchwork, clay. They are the dolls that kids used to play with. 
it was impossible to get information about toys prior to the first half of the 20th century. Oksana found that the only way to trace the history of folk dolls at least 50 or 60 years into the past is to ask elderly villagers, mostly women. So Oksana Sklarenko made dozens of such trips to villages around different regions of Ukraine in her search for information about dolls. Her studies formed the basis of not only the dissertation, but also several books. This really is cultural heritage. Our embroidery is researched, promoted, everything is fine with embroidery, clay products also. And what about dolls? And it was not so easy to prove this scientifically. At the same time, Oksana was fascinated by another doll tradition, European-American, which arose at the beginning of the 20th century. When I first visited Germany, we went to several such shops, where there were many different toys. I was drawn to the bears. When I picked them up, I saw that their legs and heads were spinning, and they had such interesting fur. Especially for UA TV. Toy designer Oksana Sklarenko will conduct a masterclass on the reconstruction of Ukrainian folk dolls and discuss the difficulties behind creating teddy bears. If you look for Ukrainian folk dolls on internet sites dedicated to handmade goods, then most often you can find matankas. These were rag dolls, usually made without a needle and thread. Simply by knotting up pieces of fabric and instead of a face, a cross was always put there. These rag dolls are relatively simple to make and very popular outside of Ukraine, though this may give the false impression that only such toys were made in the country over the course of centuries. For example, they ask me, what are you making? I say Ukrainian folk dolls. Oh, rag dolls. They became a good souvenir. But it is bad that the perception of what a folk doll is seems to be narrowed, and everyone has come down to this floor. Once, during an expedition to a Transcarpathian village, Oksana discovered facts about dolls which most likely existed hundreds of years ago. And this is not a rag doll at all, though it is also made of cloth. One woman told me that she had a log doll in her childhood. I thought, wow, as such a doll is one of the most ancient, as it is made of wood. It was with great pleasure that she demonstrated her own doll. From under a load of stacked firewood, she took a piece of wood and wrapped it in fabric. And that was it. I realized this principle. The older a doll is, the faster it is made. In her journeys, Oksana first sketched folk dolls from the words of villagers. But she soon realized that this wasn't enough, especially when talking about more complex dolls. It was necessary to work together. But then she got ready-made instructions for recreating a folk artifact. Today Oksana is reconstructing a rag doll made out of patches, which was made half a century ago in the village of Brusilev, Zhitomir region. This doll is a present from Ludmila Shebetko, born in 1949. She played with such a doll when she was in the fourth grade. She says that it is very important to try to use the most authentic materials. And the issue here is not only in the type of fabric, but also in the fact that it should not look new, because old trims that were no longer needed were used to make the dolls. I take the material, I buy a white cloth, chance, in a store, and I need to age it. This is done by dyeing the fabric in herbs, onion peel, oak bark. The size of the patches determined shape of the doll. In order to begin, it was necessary to take six bits of cloth for the arms, body and head. Now we're preparing the head. We need to sew two parts with a seam called a forward needle, and there will be a hole through which we will make the filling. It was usual for the girls, neighbors, to get together and sew many such dolls in order to visit each other with the dolls. Cotton wool was a typical material used for the filling, 
As it was easy to get from home, the parts of the body are sewn together. As the craftswoman turns them over and then fills, the body separately, the head separately. The first part of the doll is ready at last. Now we need to make the hair. To do this, we take an ordinary sewing thread, as was done in the past. Or even floss threads. I take three coils at once. I need to do it like this so as to get as much hair as I can. Oksana sews the hair onto the head and outlines the features of the face with a pen. Next, you need to wear a doll. It will be a dress with a necklace of beads. Oksana uses patches of new natural fabric, but in the village a piece from old clothes could be used. By the way, elderly ladies believe that a doll made from clothes from the home, not from someone else's home, has protective features. One woman had three children, three girls. She made a wedding present for each of them, a handmade doll, in order to protect their new family and home. This doll is modeled from Shidoma region. It's a very practical one for children's games. Expandable material which should not be long-lasting, but this doesn't mean such artifacts shouldn't be saved, even if it's an updated form, Oksana says. Why is there a need to have these specimens? Well, in order to develop tradition. Here we have a doll that has been updated a little. And when a modern-day girl sees such a doll, she'll get the desire to modify it. Oksana Sklarenko conducts master classes in various types of folk dolls on a regular basis. On this occasion, school children are sewing toys for the pupils of an orphanage. The teddy bear is quite a different story. While a folk doll is a product that's available to almost everyone, then this is a work of art. Teddy got his name from caricatures of US President Theodore Roosevelt, who did not want to kill a bear while out hunting. Such dolls were produced at the same time in the USA and Germany, and over a hundred years later craftsmen and collectors of teddy bears have become a separate community. Two dozen museums around the world are devoted to their toys. Oksana Sklarenko joined this movement, one of the first in Ukraine. This is a classic teddy bear. The points where the palms of the bear's paws should be, its feet should be, a nose of a certain shape, everything is proportional. This is a traditional classic teddy. And this very bear is the hardest to sew. She uses her own layout to make patterns of a defined form, already knowing how tall the doll will be and how full its figure will be. Before you can make the first bear, you need to go through several unsuccessful test models so as to get a feel. Modern teddy bears are made of fox fur. I sew the legs together, collect the parts separately, then the wood chips are next. There is a special metallic granulate, there is a mineral one. There is even a natural one, and a glass one too. It should be like a stone, full. It must be packed solid. Yet this is not a soft toy, as this is a completely different level of culture. Oksana uses special tools to fill the bear as tightly as possible and to put the legs and head onto the original disc mounts, which provide mobility. The craftswoman cuts the hair on the face and embroiders the nose and the lines of the mouth. Glass eyes can be ordered separately. After assembling the bear, it also needs to be tinted with dry paint, so that the wool does not look like cloth and it seems alive. Oksana puts together such a teddy in 24 hours. If we sew clothes for the teddy, then according to the rules, they should be functional, with clasps, so that we could take them off, wash and iron them. I take photos of the past and see what kind of clothes the children wore. And there's also quite an interesting culture behind this clothing. Lots of bells, laces, bows. A whole collection of retro photographs, teddy bears, folk dolls and designer dolls and even soldiers has already gathered in Oksana's workshop. She dreams of opening a museum one day in order to interest today's children in this material culture. 
both national and world culture. It would be a beautiful museum, so diverse, but still associated with childhood and with dolls and toys. Boys and girls would be entertained, as everyone would find what he or she needs. From reconstructions of folk dolls to teddy bears, Oksana Sklarenko has become a unique craftswoman who is opening up through every possible means the Ukrainian toy tradition to the whole world.